Aaron Dykes here for Infowars.com. Obviously, I'm outraged just about the use of executive orders themselves. It's very abusive of constitutional powers. The fact that he has bragged through his aides to the media in Reuters that he's going to act without Congress. It's even more outrageous that he staged this press conference exploiting children, bringing them on stage with him. The same Obama who fake cried over the Sandy Hook shooting. The same Obama who released the White House photo showing him looking distraught. The the same Obama who lied about the entire bin Laden account, a staged photo of the Situation Room supposedly watching the raid, the same Obama administration lying about Benghazi. But worse than that is the actual actions taken in those executive orders, and Obama's not even done with 23 of them. He's still going to ask Congress to reinstate the assault weapons ban and do even more. Now remember the words of Obama's first chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, now mayor of the murder capital of the world, who also wants gun control. He said, never let a good crisis go to waste. It's an opportunity to do something you couldn't do before. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. Now, it's on record the Obama administration has been pursuing gun control all along. I did a top 10 list of the actions of his previous administration. Also, Senator Feinstein was amassing legislation to reinstitute the assault weapons ban at the time of the election, and they were waiting to use the appropriate crisis that became Sandy Hook. So let's just remember they always wanted to exploit a good crisis, and that's what we've seen now. With that in mind, at at least two of Obama's executive orders on gun control institute a brainwashing mentality. Remember that Eric Holder, Attorney General, said in 1995 he wants to brainwash the American public on guns the way they did with cigarettes. And just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. And here inside those 23 executive orders are two political campaign propaganda points. One to launch a national safe and responsible gun ownership campaign and another to have a national dialogue on mental health with Kathleen Sebelius, the head of Health and Human Services, and Arne Duncan, the Education Secretary. Now, Obama, of course, has announced he's looking for ways to act without Congress, without having to even ask for permission to infringe upon the uninfringible Second Amendment of the Bill of Rights to the Constitution. With that said, look at how he's exploited health care in his executive orders. Here it is in the Weekly Standard, Obama asked doctors to help deal with guns. And he reminds them in several different executive orders, as many, of seven, as many as seven executive orders could be put in this category, where he reminds doctors that they're able to report on suspicious activity. They're able to ask their patients if they own guns and if they have guns in their homes. They're able to flag people for threats against, uh, for violent threats, report them to authorities, and what they're doing is building a mental health database flagging people for potentially unstable behavior. Obviously, we don't want crazed people going out in society and shooting up crowds of people. At the same time, we want to maintain due process and we don't want to create a snitch culture where the entire Obamacare apparatus is used to spy upon Americans, which is all dangerous for the sake that we've seen what they do with the terror watch list. Once you get on it, it doesn't matter if you've ever done anything wrong. It's very difficult, if not impossible possible to get off that list. And we've been told more lists are coming. Rahm Emanuel said in this clip, no fly, no buy. If you're on that no fly list, your access to the right to bear arms is canceled because you're not part of the American family. He was at the Brady Center and said his number one priority was to get people on a no buy gun list that you lose that right. That was under the context of terrorism, but it's going to apply to mental health as well. And we've seen Chuck Schumer in the Senate and others already trying to introduce that legislation long before the Sandy Hook shooting ever happened. Kurt Nimmo wrote about it in December. He also wrote about it back in June and July of the last summer. And he's trying to introduce legislation to disarm uh, veterans who have been identified with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. But they're also going to unleash the ATF, the FBI, you name it, into these centralized health databases to flag other Americans who show symptoms of mental illness or other flags, and they will not be able to buy if they're 
they're on that list when the background checks are conducted. Now, Gun Owners of America warn how under Obamacare, the centralized medical records would, quote, allow the FBI to troll a list of Americans for ailments such as post-traumatic stress disorder and deny them their gun rights the same way that the Veterans Administration has already denied more than 150,000 veterans. You better believe that's dangerous. It's a snitch list. It's a chilling effect on the Second Amendment, and we have to not go along with that. Now, again, this is about taking away your Second Amendment without due process. Obviously, we don't want criminals running around killing people, but felons are already barred from purchasing guns. There's already extensive criminal background checks. You have to fill out a two-page survey just to buy a gun, even at gun shows. But here, there's at least eight of these new executive orders with new regulations through the ATF or through the FBI on these federal background check systems and more. Now, the Attorney General is going to review categories of people not allowed to buy guns. Uh, this goes along with the raising the mental health specter as a new way of disenfranchising people as they strengthen the federal background check system. They're telling law enforcement to, quote, run a full background check before returning seized guns. Now, that is very suggestive because what is a seized gun? Is a seized gun any gun that's not registered with the federal government, even though it may be legally owned by a perfectly law-abiding citizen? Are these guns found during traffic stops, during home visits? Are they uh, snitched out through spies and neighbors? What are these seized guns? And furthermore, how long will it take to run a full background check? We know they could do background checks almost instantaneously within minutes, but we've also seen in states that issue permits like New York, getting that permit, getting the background check, checking the references can take months easily. That's if they even approve them. The ATF's going to send new letters to gun dealers on how to run back checks for private sales. Now, this is important. They've already tried to shut down private sales outside of gun shows. Now, by getting the federally licensed firearms dealers to help with the background checks, it effectively bans private gun sales if they then have to go to gun dealers and perform the background checks. And again, most of the gun purchases already go through background checks, but this is to restrict great grandfathering of firearms, trading with your neighbors, and uh, having guns that aren't strictly registered where they know where you live and everything. There's a lot of other rules we're going to continue to analyze all these executive orders, but it's a very dangerous pattern. They're getting the first responders, the schools, the churches to all perform crisis drills and really expect a huge paranoid terrorism shooter spree when statistically it's very rare doesn't happen much. The real danger is the executive branch taking too much power, Obama or any other president acting as a dictator, acting outside of Congress. That's what we have to be outraged about. That's why we need to call for impeachment and we need to say no to this death by a thousand cuts through these regulations. Uh, it's, there's more. The full reports in my analysis, InfoWars analysis of Obama's war on guns up at InfoWars.com. Signing off. Stay tuned and keep watching what they're doing with the legislation because they say they're not done yet with the gun bans.